There is a huge misconception that if you want to specialize in AI, machine learning, data science, or become a data analyst, data scientist, cybersecurity professional, and all that, then you can forget about the infrastructure and the infrastructure skills. So basically forget about the cloud, forget about automation tools and all that, which is wrong. In this video, I will show you why you need to learn Docker and why you have to learn it now if you are in IT or you are considering to be in IT in the near future or you would like to have a lot of tools in your skill set box that you can use and leverage. So let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and do a simple search on one of the AI tools available. Why is Docker valuable and beneficial to a lot of professions that we are going to discuss. But before that, please subscribe to the channel. There will be a lot of videos coming up in English that are going to be beneficial to anyone who wants to be in IT in the foreseeable future. So you don't want to miss anything. Activate the notification, give us a like and share and let the video reach as much people as possible to benefit everyone. So let's go ahead and start with what is Docker? Why is Docker so appealing and so attractive right now? To simplify the matter, we have software and the software needs computations or computing devices, computing power to run, right? So that could be on a server, on a physical server, it could be on a virtual machine, VMware, Hyper-V and so on, or it could be on containers, or it could be containerized, it could be run in software basically. Physical servers and virtual machines, they have issues. Issues like what? Uh, um, lack of optimized usage of resources, uh, slow or long time to start, slow start. Um, the, the fact that when it is ported to other environments, it's not guaranteed it will work without problems. Physical servers, you have to shift and you have to lift and shift the server in order to get to another place. The beauty of containers is the fact that it's portable, it's highly scalable, it's very fast to boot and all that. So let's find out in Lehman terms, what is a container? So as you can see on the screen, a container, we are going to visualize that as a box. The box could be, as you can see, cardboard, or it could be the container, the shipping container on the ships. So what is the idea of containers? You need to put everything that your application or your code needs to run in one place and lock it. So you put your code, be it Python, be it Java, R, whatever it is, and whether you are working on machine learning, on cybersecurity, or you are a developer, you are doing automation, you are a DevOps engineer, a data scientist, MLOps engineer, all of that, you will need to write code to do what, whatever is supposed to happen. And the code needs an interpreter so the computing device or the computing machine can understand it. That's why we need the runtime. For example, if this is Python, we need, let's say, Python 3, for example, to be installed. Then there would be configuration parameters, like which version, what is the location of this, what is the URL of the database you would like to connect to. All of that is going to be included as well in the box, in the container. And then you add any dependencies. You need this driver, you need that version of this, that version of that, all of these, are the passwords, environment variables that you need, all of that is going to be contained. And then we seal the box, we seal the container. So once we do this, then all what we need is to transform that into an image, a template from which we can run the actual containers. So what is a container then? The container is nothing more than a program, a software program that runs as an isolated process in your environment. So what's my environment? That could be a physical server, it could be a virtual machine. So a software component that runs on top of your computing device. If you noticed here, we haven't mentioned anything about operating systems. We didn't say that we are going to add Windows or Linux or Mac OS or Ubuntu or Real or whatever the operating system required to run this. We don't. You don't include that in the container. And therefore, the features of the containers that make it very appealing is it doesn't require a separate OS. So the size is very small. You don't need that 40 or 70 gigs for the operating system to execute and run. It's isolated. 
once we seal it, it becomes like the shipping container on the back of the boat or on the docks of the boats. It doesn't know anything about the containers around. The containers around don't know anything about the content of these containers. So it's all self-contained environments and self-sufficient because they have everything they need to run. Because it's small, it's very fast to run, it's very fast to tear down. We're talking about milliseconds in this case. It is repeatable. Use the same template to run container anywhere on AWS, on Google, on Azure, on premises, it's going to be the same result. And definitely that also makes it portable. So today I'm on, with AWS, I'm not very happy with AWS. I'm going to ship my templates elsewhere and I'm going to move my production workloads elsewhere as well. And it's easily scalable. Software components, 60 megs, 60 megabytes, 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes, half a gig, very easy to scale because it spins in milliseconds. So this is very important, but how does this magic happen? And how can I run the code on a computing device without an operating system? Doesn't make sense, right? So let's find out. So to run the containers, you need a host. And the host can be a virtual machine or it can be a physical server. On the host, there will be the hardware required, the CPUs, the RAM, the desks, and the G GCPUs and all that. There is an operating system that is going to be shared among the different containers. And the mechanism to share that is through the engine. This is the mastermind. This is the brain of the dockerized or the containerization. And this is how the different containers they access the kernel of your operating system on the host as if they had their own operating system. So that's how we succeed in making this work this way. All right, so we know this. Now let's go back and use AI to tell us how is this beneficial, containerization or Docker and learning Docker is beneficial in the different professions that you could be aspiring or maybe are working on right now. So here we go. I asked ChatGPT, would Docker be beneficial to data analysts, machine learning engineers, AI engineers, data scientists, and MLOps engineers? And the answer was, with examples, Docker is about productivity boosting, major productivity boost. And that is why no matter what your application is, no matter what your use is, you will need to use that tool to boost your productivity. So let's take it with data analysts. The benefit is it will ensure consistent environments, whether you're using Jupyter Notebooks, Python, R, or any database clients, it's going to provide you consistency wherever you work and whenever you work. And here's a use case, running a local container with a Jupyter Notebook that already has Pandas, NumPy, and other libraries in Python, and a connection to Postgres or Snowflake. So here's an example that we're the data analyst. If he or she, they know how to use Docker, then they can be very productive and they can be very fast to deploy whatever they are working on as projects or to test it. Machine learning engineers, benefit. Easily isolate model training environments. You need isolation. So in that case, whether you're using TensorFlow, PyTorch, you need to do that isolation and you need to scale without breaking the actual runtime that you are working on. Use case, run GCPU or GPU enabled training in Docker container using NVIDIA Docker. AI engineers, it will help them build and deploy deep learning models with specific dependencies like the ONNX or hugging face and packaging those inside containers. And here is a use case as well for that, for inference services with fast API or Flask Plus inside containers and ship it to staging or to production environments. Then you have data scientists share research easily, whether you are using uh, full experiments with notebooks and so on and dependencies, they can be contained and then you can build the image template and then send it and share it with others. So this is reproducible experimentation. MLOps engineers, machine learning ops, Repeatable, automated, and scalable deployments is the core of MLOps, like in DevOps. So Docker is the core of that. And here's an example, model service uh, pipelines, CI, CD workflows, and monitoring tools, all containerized. 
So the common thing across all IT professions that Docker is going to provide you is environmental reproducibility. You can reproduce the environment in development, in testing, in staging, on AWS or elsewhere. Dependency management. So now it's all self-contained within that template or image. So you don't need to worry about conflicts between different dependencies for different applications you are using. Portability. The fact that you can run it anywhere you would like on your development environment, on your laptop, in the cloud, on premises, and version control, because it's all about scripts and the scripts can be con version controlled. So this tells you why no matter what, the profession that you are aspiring from the hot skills in IT, you have to learn Docker. Of course, I did not include DevOps, I did not include development, I did not include cybersecurity, I did not include cloud, because it's obvious. It's obvious that they are needed today. This is known. What is not known is the assumption or the, the misconception that if I'm going to be in AI or machine learning or data science, then I don't need really, really need to worry about cloud or uh, Docker specifically for this one. Of course, when you scale the containerized usage or the containerized application efforts, then going into Kubernetes is going to be the right step to do. And probably I'll make another video also the same style to explain to you why do you need to do that. So learn Docker and learn it right now because it's going to help you master your job no matter what that is and no matter what your career path is within IT. If you are a newcomer, if you are transforming into IT or if you are upskilling into IT, learn Docker if you haven't done so and learn it right now. And it's very, very easy to learn. I'm working on a course that will be published in the next few days in English, and that will take you from zero to pro in Docker very fast. So look in the description box for the URL, and I will see you in the next video. But please consider subscribing to the channel, activating the notifications, and give us a like and share. Let the video reach as many people as possible to benefit immensely. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.